the unit on batch setting and line balancing. In this unit, you will understand the methods of batch setting for apparel production. This unit comprises of two modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. By the end of the unit, students will be able to state batch setting process, outline line balancing concepts, give examples from garment industry to illustrate the concept. The first module explains the batch setting process. Batch setting for apparel production. In apparel manufacturing industry, assembly line process involves set of workstation in which specific operations are performed in a predefined sequence. The aim of assembly line balance planning in swing line is to assign tasks to the workstations so that machines of the workstation can perform the assigned task with the balance loading so that the mean absolute deviation which is called as MAD can be minimized. Line balancing is to set a flow through each workstation to be as similar as possible, checking from time to time to see how things are going and making adjustments to even out the flow again. We will learn about batch setting by two methods. Batch setting by method 1 involves following steps, calculation of labor requirement, operation breakdown and theoretical balancing. Calculation of labor requirement. The first step is to allocate enough people to an order to ensure that it is completed on time. The work content of one garment multiplied by the number of order gives the work content of the order. The time in which it must be completed is divided into the work content of the order to give the required output in standard hours per hour. The current figure of attendance utilization and performance are required. Floaters are required to cover for absenteeism and the problem of balancing. Calculation of this sort is not exact and it is usually good enough to decide upon the number of operators needed purely on the basis of absenteeism. Required output in standard minutes per hour, that is size of the order into work content of the garment divided by time in hours. Labor required, required output in standard minutes per hour divided by 60 into predicted utilization, into predicted performance, into predicted attendance. Floater plus operator is equals to labor. Operation breakdown. The job must be broken down into operations of equal sizes. The operation breakdown includes element description from method study, standard time for each operation and the type of machinery required, special work aid and the attachment that should be used is also mentioned. This table displays the operation breakdown for the back section of the pair of jeans. Theoretical operation balance. The number of elements should match the number of people calculated in the labor requirement. The alternate arrangement in theoretical balancing includes putting operators in parallel, operator in series, method or construction changes and workplace improvement. Pitch time is a theoretical operation time each operator should take for a planned balance line. It is calculated as SAM value of the style divided by number of operators required to meet the target. Batch setting by method 2. Operation bulletin is prepared which includes one column for calculated machine requirement and other column for actual machine requirement as shown in the chart. Calculated machine which is calculated requirement mostly comes in fraction. Secondly, you have to allocate correct number of machines to get the output as per hourly target. Where work content is high which is higher than the pitch time, you plan for more than one machine for same operation. When do you add one machine more and share work with other operation depends on the work content and it is decided by upper and lower control limits. This table displays the operation bulletin with pitch time, UCL and LCL. Upper limit is calculated by adding 10% to 15% of basic pitch time minus 10 to 15% to calculate lower limit. Standard limit is plus minus 10 percentage. In the following diagram, UCL and LCL has been drawn considering 
plus minus 15 percentage of pitch time. This pitch diagram is drawn with operation time, pitch time, UCL and LCL. Blue line shows basic time in seconds. When blue line will remain within UCL and LCL, that is plus minus 15 percentage limit, one machine is considered for those operations. When basic time of an operation is above upper limit 2, machines will be assigned for that operation. Example, attached sleeve, suicide seam with label and stitch sleeve hem. Now we'll take an example of batch setting. 7680 skirts must be made in 2 week time, each of 40 hours. Predicted attendance is 90 percentage. Predicted utilization is 85 percentage. Predicted average piecework performance is 95 BSI. SAM of the garment is 10 minutes and the performance of the floater is 50 BSI. Let us calculate the following required output in SAM per hour, number of labor required, number of floater required, number of operator required, pitch time for the operation and what is the significance of pitch time in line balancing. Required output in standard minutes per hour. It is calculated as size of the hour into work content per garment divided by time in hours that is 960 SAM per hour. Labor required that is required output in standard minutes per hour divided by 60 into 1 upon predicted utilization into 1 upon predicted performance into 1 upon predicted attendance. So the answer is 22 labor. Operator plus floater is equals to labor. That is 22 minus 4 is equals to 18. Pitch time. That is equals to SAM value of the style divided by number of operator required to meet the target. That is equals to 10 upon 18 if there are 3 lines. So 0.55 minutes. Pitch time is a theoretical operation time. Each operator should take for the planned balance line. It is calculated as SAM value of the style divided by number of operator required to meet the target. This module explains the process of line balancing. Line balancing has three steps, batch setting, initial balance and balance control. Initial balance, the expected performance of the people available must be taken from the skill inventory in order to man the line in the way that smoothens out the potential variations in output between the stations shown in the theoretical balance. It is usual to select floaters at this stage which help to cope up with absenters and imbalance. Operator skill inventory. This database maintains the record of each operator who can do what operation and what rating. It is very important to keep this database updated as over the time operator acquires skill for new operations as well as improve the performance in the existing operations. Allocation of operators. Allocation also depends on type of the balance required. One approach of allocation is to find the closest match between the operator performance required and the operator performance available. This type of allocation results in intrinsic balance of line. Another approach of allocation is to utilize the operators in the operations they can do the best. This approach results in dynamic balance of line. Let's understand this with an example. There are three operations, collar attaching, cuff attaching and band hemming. The SAM machine required target output and operator performance required is displayed. Displayed here is the operator skill inventory chart for Sita. Urmila, Rita and Savita for operations A, B and C. When operator allocation with intrinsic and dynamic balancing is done, for the three operations, the result are different as shown here. For intrinsic balance, total three operators are allocated with closest performance available. For operation A, 100 percentage operator is needed and the closest available is Urmila, that is 105 percentage. For dynamic balancing, only two operators are allocated. Total performance needed is 246 percentage, that is 100 plus 80 plus 66. Savita and Rita together, that is 100 plus 140 
percentage can match the requirement. Here operators are allocated to the operations they can do the best. The dynamic balance results in better operator utilization but it is comparatively difficult to maintain. Now let's discuss some of the parameters of intrinsic and dynamic balancing. Number of people required is more in intrinsic compared to dynamic. Movement of operator is less in intrinsic. Heavy absenteeism is not preferred in intrinsic balancing. Supervisor skill is less and it is more required in dynamic balancing. WIP management is lesser in intrinsic balancing compared to dynamic. Operator utilization is not good in intrinsic balancing compared to dynamic balancing. Material movement is less which is good and warming up loss is also less in intrinsic compared to dynamic balancing. Balance control. Balance control is perhaps the most vital skill in the supervisor with its objective to maintain the highest output and not to keep the people busy. To set the flow through each operation to be as similar as possible, checking from time to time to see how things are going and making adjustments to even out the flow again. All grid stations will produce the same amount per unit time in a balanced production system. Control parameters in line balancing are operator skill inventory, allocation, balance, attendance, movement of operators, floater, rating, pitch time, WIP, etc. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize, in this unit you have learned about process of path setting and line balancing. We will be learning more about line balancing and doing simulation exercise in apparel production management part 2. Thank you.